Hello everyone! Now that you are all oriented to learning in Canvas, we need to get going on our studies of human biology. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to start chapter one today. And as we get going in this, it's helpful just to take a few minutes and set some basic definitions and parameters um, so that we kind of know what to expect. So human biology, this is a type of biology. And so we're going to start just with the question, what is biology? Biology is the scientific study of life. And um, on that note, we're going to be talking in this chapter about some of the things that comprise science. What is science specifically? Science is just the study of the natural world. And it's confined to just studies of the natural world. So that sets some parameters. Um, the natural world consists of all matter and energy. So biology, um, fitting within this discipline of science, biology is going to involve a lot of scientific studies of living organisms specifically. So we're going to start off here just by describing what do we mean by living things? What does it mean to be a living organism? And this is something that it's hard to set a really a really um, like clear-cut definition on what is life? That's a big question, right? But what we can do is describe some of the characteristics of life. So all of the living things that we know about, um, they all have certain features that are kind of apparent, certain characteristics. So we're gonna start off just by listing some of those characteristics of life. Living things, what do they all have in common? All living things have a specific type of molecular composition. They have specific sorts of molecules. There are four major types of biological molecules. Um, we will be learning about them this semester. Um, so these four different types of biological molecules, these include the, the proteins, uh, the carbohydrates, the lipids, and nucleic acids. Nucleic acids include things like DNA. That's a very good molecule for storing information, and it allows living things to reproduce from one generation to the next. So that's one thing, just having a particular molecular makeup. Um, another thing that all living things have in common is they all require energy, and they all need raw materials. Okay, so you can't keep going, right? If you, if you don't have access to food, your energy source, it's not possible to keep going for very long. So in order to sustain life, this requires an input of energy and building materials. So one thing that we'll be focused on in this class, human biology, is metabolism. Metabolism is a word that describes all the chemical reactions that are taking place in the human body. Um, so there are a lot of different processes, energy transformations going on, molecules get built up and broken down. All of that is described as metabolism. Um, so this is going to, we'll see this come up over and over again this semester. Uh, what's another characteristic of living things? All living things are made of cells. So a single cell is like the basic unit of life. Organisms, living things, can be built from either just one cell or they can be made of lots of cells that work together. Our bodies are made of trillions of cells. We've got lots of cells um, working together in order to make up the human body. If you take a look at the picture here on the slide, this is just showing a couple of different examples. There's a unicellular organism, a bacteria, on the left. And um, then on the right, this is showing lots of cells working together. These are actually cells in the stomach lining. And so we'll be coming back to that later on when we talk about the digestive system. All living things, moving right along down our list here, all living things are able to maintain their internal conditions. And this is called homeostasis. Maintaining homeostasis, this just means we're um, living things are able to keep things relatively consistent internally. And that's true even when the surroundings are in fluctuation. So using our own bodies as an example, right, if you go outside on a hot day or on a cold day, uh, what happens to your internal temperature? You have kind of like an internal thermostat. Things are kept pretty constant internally. It's not like your temperature fluctuates dramatically. So that's called maintaining homeostasis, keeping things relatively constant internally. Living things can respond 
to their environments. So when things change in your surroundings, um, you can respond to that. And there are lots of different examples we could give of this. The one that I have on the slide here has to do with plants. Plants that are outside, um, they tend to turn their leaves to face the sun, and that helps them to be able to photosynthesize kind of at an optimum. Um, if their leaves don't face the sun, then they're not gonna be able to absorb as much um, as many photons from the sun. So there's a, an ability to respond. Even plants can respond to their environment. Um, going back to the temperature example, so outside on a hot day, what do the rabbits do? They tend to move into the shade. They don't stay out there in the sun where it's hot. They respond by moving to where it's cooler and that helps them to, in turn, maintain their homeostasis. So some of these things start to kind of link back in together with each other. Living things throughout their lifetime can grow and reproduce. So there's an ability here to, to change and develop over time. And a lot of this is guided by what's going on with the DNA, one of those special types of biological molecules that we have. So growth and development um, is dictated by the genes that we have encoded in our DNA. And the picture that goes along here is just kind of to illustrate the way that this plays out can be very different in one organism versus another. If we look at bacteria, like these cells, uh, reproduction basically involves one cell duplicating itself, making almost an identical copy of itself. Reproduction in mammals or in larger animals can be much more complex. This in involves building in genetic diversity into the next generation. And so we're gonna be getting into some of these details um, as we proceed forward in the class. Finally, just to wrap up sort of the characteristics of life, um, we've been talking about individuals at, at this level, living things all have these specific things in common. Um, but if we talk about entire populations of living things, we would say that populations can evolve over time. And in the context of biology, what this just means is that um, is that certain things can change from one generation to the next. It might just be a very small change, uh, but these changes can happen and that helps living things to adapt to their surroundings, be able to make efficient use of things like food and resources. Um, so that word evolution that applies to populations of living things doesn't really apply to individuals so much, right? You can't just evolve, but if we look through multiple generations, we can see changes that happen. Um, and that's sometimes a helpful thing. Okay, so next up we're going to look at specifically humans. How do humans fit into the natural world?